All right, welcome everybody. Aesop Grimm here, and this is the first episode of our Fresh Start in 2021 campaign for Elite Dangerous. I've uh, started the countdown timer. I want to go over a few things before we even take off. Uh, first of all, let's take a look at Aesop. Uh, Aesop is named, you know, same character, same nickname that I use on this channel, but he doesn't actually look like me. Um, so just. That's more like just FYI. Uh, let's see. Um, he, he, well, he actually, from the side profile, he actually looks a lot like I did whenever I was younger, uh, quite a bit, in my opinion. But um, when you get into the other views, uh, he's different. So let's see. If we do this, we can zoom in, and then this to adjust the focus okay so I don't have a total story made up yet I just have kind of some ideas and one of the ideas I have is that this guy whatever planet that he was on and whatever industry he was involved in he got catastrophically jacked up uh, there was some kind of workplace accident or something and uh the stress from that you can see from you can tell from his skin and his uh that he's generally young right but he's got this silver gray hair and that's because that came from the stress that his body underwent when he had this near-death experience and that also explains the cybernetic overlays that we have um on his face and neck along with the cybernetic eyes all that stuff had to get he had to get augmented in order to live now he doesn't have any special superhuman abilities these just simply restore his ability to live and function like a human being who had not had an accident um, and i wanted to go with the muted colors because uh they're, they're not supposed to they're supposed to be as little distracting as possible they should be subdued but they don't have the ability to be completely invisible at this point in time and then the eyes are obviously those aren't human eyes those are replica eyes he lost his human eyes so that's sort of the idea i'm working with uh, i gave him the black suit uh, one i think the blue lights pop out really well on both the black suit and the white suit and number two, putting the white decals on the black suit, I thought matched with his uh, general. He's got a gray, black, and uh, silvery, silvery white motif going here. So anyway, that's our commander. That is Aesop. And uh, we'll return over here. Now, I play on the computer, and that allows us to do a couple things with the HUD. And I want to show you both of them. Number one, I've changed the FOV, the field of view. And number two, I have changed the HUD colors because you can customize your HUD colors on PC. So to change your field of view, um, I'm new to this aspect. Uh, basically, I, I have altered it so that the HUD is smaller and seems a little bit further away. And that exposes the glass better. But the big thing it does is it gets rid of what's called a fisheye effect when you look out over this way. Now, I still see a little bit of one. I think I can detect a little bit of a fisheye effect, but it's vastly reduced from what it was. Now, as I understand it, there's a couple popular FOVs to use if you play on a 16 by 9 monitor. Uh, one is 70. And the other is 82, I believe, maybe 82.5. I also saw one forum entry that alludes, or at least hints, that it may, uh, you may want to tinker around with your field of view, uh, different 
FOVs for different canopies that come with these different ships. And once you settle into a ship that you're going to be in for a while, you may want to tinker around and find a custom FOV that you like for that particular ship. I only saw one entry that hinted at that, but it seems like that might be the case. So let's Alt-Tab. I'm going to take you to my desktop. And... Uh, Let's see, can you even see my desktop? I have the display capture on, you should be able to. Yes, okay. So what you need to do is uh, you need to go to your PC and find your, your main drive, whatever your main drive is. Usually it's the C drive. You're gonna open that up, you're gonna scroll down and find users. And from there, you're gonna go into your computer name and then into app data, then into local. Okay, so users, well, C drive or whatever your main drive is, users, your computer name, app data, and then local. You're going to scroll down. Everything's in alphabetical order. And you're going to find there are two Frontier developments here. You want the one that does not have the underscore. You're going to open that up. Open Elite Dangerous up. Go to Options. Go to Graphics and you will open settings up with a notepad program of your choice. I use notepad plus and then uh, right here FOV this is default set to 60 you would just simply change it to whatever you want okay 70 is what I have selected and then you would uh, in this program here you would X out right here and it would ask you if you want to save if you made any changes so that's how you do that. Now, let's we're going to leave this file up because you're going to come back here to adjust the graphics settings if you want to do the HUD. Um, in order to find graphics settings for the HUD, there's a couple ways. See all these different? Look at what people have picked out. That's pretty. Purple and pink. That would be if you have a female commander, this might look really nice. You know, and then you can maybe find suits that would match it. Um, but people have done a lot of things, you know, here's a blue one. You can adjust the intensity of it inside your cockpit. But, um, what you can do is I have simply, you can see here, I Googled elite dangerous custom HUD colors. And then this, uh, site right here, guide or no, excuse me. This one right here, HUD color editor, elite dangerous wiki. If you click that, it'll walk you through exactly how you do this. It's pretty simple. There's a couple videos they link you to even. Everything that you need to know will be right here. They're going to link you to a couple different sites, Arku and Karudo. These are where you can adjust your colors. And you can get whatever you want going on. And then you just play with it until you find something that you like. Okay. The same thing over on Arku. I don't know why we have that going on. There we go. And Arku, I, I kind of prefer Arku. One of the reasons is because you can adjust your point of view from center to your info panels or, uh, your outfitting panels, your radar, right? Because when you change these colors, it starts changing the colors of enemies and allies. Here, this is the original, and down at the bottom is what you're switching it to. So, um, you want to be mindful of those things. So, I like using RQ, but uh, what I like even more, quite honestly, is if we go back to the query right here if you scroll down a little bit more and you go to um, this one right here no 2 the definitive list of 1.72.2 compatible HUD color if you click on that you get presets and they notice how they go in a gradient 
You just find one that you like in the color spectrum that you prefer. So I saw one up here that I think uh, this one right here looks pretty nice to me. And what I like about this, when you click spoiler, you get two pictures. Here's what it's going to look like from your cockpit. And here's what it's going to look like when you're looking at your panels or your station services. So if you like this, you would uh, copy this code right here. They also have a link to Arku. So you would highlight this and you would hit control C. Okay, now the one that I use right now is actually this one right here. I like this one. So I would uh, actually you just need to con you just need to copy this. The three matrix lines. This up here is a description of what colors are being used and what friendlies and hostiles look like. And from here, what you will do is you will navigate back to that app data folder. It's uh, your main drive, normally C drive, users, your computer name, app data. It'll be like percent app data percent or something like that. Um, ro uh, not roaming, local. And then you find the elite dangerous or the frontier developments that does not have the underscore does not have the underscore and you open that up navigate to elite dangerous navigate to options navigate to graphics and then you're going to open up your graphics configuration override if you might have to create this file it's okay like this doesn't come pre-made you'll probably have to create it just simply create new document Type in graphics configuration override.xml and it'll make it. And then you open it up with Notepad. And this is the code that you would paste in. Now, these, if you're making this, if you're having to make this from scratch, see right now I already have it made. So I would just simply highlight right here and I would paste those three matrix lines. But if you just now made this from scratch, you're going to have to paste this entire code in. And that first site that I showed you that walks you through how to do all this, um, those will show you how to do it. Let's click on Arku here. It's even right here in the instructions. Here's the whole code line right here. That's everything. You would, contr you would copy that, control C, Come over, create your document, open it up in your blank document. You would hit control V and it would put all that in there. Then you would save it. And now all you have to do, if you ever change the colors in the future is you highlight the three matrix lines and you replace them. Now, the other place that you would want to do this at is you would go to wherever your steam directory is. I keep mine separate. But a lot of people, it's in their program 86 file on their C drive or their main drive. Mine is on X drive. It's a separate partition I keep on my C drive. Go into Steam Apps, Common, Elite Dangerous. Go into Products. Go to Elite Dangerous 64. And scroll down here, and it's in Graphics Configuration. Okay, it's it's the same thing. You open edit with notepad and here you have to kind of look for it. You're just looking for those three matrix lines. It should pop out right there. GUI color default standard and then those are the three that you would replace. This is the main file. When you navigate, whenever I tell you to go also do it in your um percent app data let's go all the way up here back to PC users computer name app data local frontier developments elite dangerous options 
graphics, graphic configuration override. This document right here will override what is in the main file in case you get an update to Elite and they and they change that so it goes back to defaults. This will override it then. So I don't know if maybe you only need to update this and you don't have to worry about doing the one in the X drive or wherever your Steam games are at, but I just do them both. All right, so I have shown you how to change your field of view and I have shown you how to change your custom HUD colors. Let's go ahead and hop back into the game then. And let's take a look at this HUD. Over on the left where you have that circular thing with what looks like kind of like a torpedo in, in the middle of a circle, that's where your target's going to be. Um, over on the right is your ship. The three rings around that are the shields. Um, you can see shields are at 100% right now. Uh, to the right of that, you have your systems, engines, and weapons. This is like uh, you can divert power from one system to another to beef it up and make it perform even better. And you need to know how to do that when you're in combat, particularly for, for the systems who are in charge of uh, recharging your shields. Engine is going to dictate what your types, your top speed is, and your uh, as well as your acceleration. And uh, weapons are going to dictate how how long you can fire before you run out of energy. Talking about laser-based weapons and how fast it recharges. So there are hotkeys that you can set up to take care of all that. To the right of that, you see fuel, you see mass locked landing gear and cargo scoop uh, you can let's see the last thing I want to say before we get going well I think I'll talk to you about that on the way let's go ahead and launch and then I'm gonna tell you something that I it, it's a very subjective opinion I'm just putting it on the table because there's a general sentiment that's pretty sweeping, and I'm saying that for me, it didn't work out that way, and I'm going to make a case for something. Not really to try and change your mind, but to keep you from being scared of even trying. I mean, maybe you can give it a shot and find um, that you're like me, maybe. And anyway, I'll get into that here in a minute. For right now, we have... A mission. Remember, I am following Hawks Gaming's tutorial for how to get the best start in 2021. It's named something like that. But um, he wants us to go to the Matet system. Welcome to the galaxy. Moss and Doc, the Dromi system. I'm sorry. Dromi, not Matet. So. We'll open the galaxy map. We'll go over here to the plot path area. We'll type in Dromi, press enter. We'll select that. I wonder what this blue icon means here this means pilots federation this is you have to have a special permit to get in here this is so that if you're playing an open play um highly ranked people can't come in here and just troll you and death camp you um so you have to have a special permit to get into this system it's part of the pilot federate pilots federation this means that we're routed to go there currently and I do not know what this right here means, and I don't see anything here that... Oh, there we go. Missions. Oh, so we have a mission in this system. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Let's go ahead and take off. We've got 11 minutes left in this game. This is just the opening episode, and I wanted to show you guys, kind of give you a brief intro on the stuff we're dealing with here.
Okay. Um, if we look up at our comms panel, we have three messages. We received a complimentary gift from Jarek Larenth. This is just basically a free paint job for your Sidewinder. Um, so they tell you about that right there, and we can trash that now. We have been told that we've been given a Pilots Federation District permit, and that message is just right through there. You can, do you scroll down? No, S, for me it's S. And then we can destroy that. And we've also been issued a system permit for Sirius. And there's the uh, info right there. We can use head look to look at the guns as we sweep by. And from this point, as soon as you accelerate, you'll regain control of your ship. So we're at full power. If you keep your accelerator in the colored region, for me, that's orange. I think default, if you didn't change your HUD colors, that's a blue area. That's, uh, you should have learned this from pilot training. That will help you turn at optimal rates. If you're at max power, you're, you're going to do wide loops. And if you're at low power, it's also going to be very slow turning. Right here is your optimal area. But uh, we'll hit J. For me, it's J. Ah, we're, uh, we're mass locked. Also, I want to set up my fire groups. Right now, I only have one firing group. I want to add another. And I want my discovery scanner to be number one and my data link scanner to be number two. This is one of the ways that you can gain um, a little bit of exploration data over time and you can sell that and make money off of it. It's, you have the no fire zone. Control out. it's called honking the system. So I'll show you when we get to drum. Well, actually, I'll show you right now. Okay, so it's for me, it's mapped to button one. It's my directional scanner, and that's what I mapped it to. So if I press that. We just honk the system, and we have a basic idea of how many, you know, different planets are here and moons and stuff like that. Okay, now we're going to jump. The thing I want to tell you about is HOTAS. Most people, almost everybody, will tell you that having a HOTAS greatly enhances your immersion. Um, I think that's a little bit inaccurate. Now, this is what I mean by it's very subjective. It's, I think, I think there's a nuance being missed there. Um, we don't know that uh, spacecraft will be mapped just like airplanes that fly in Earth's atmosphere, for example. Now, if we look down, here's where your immersion comes in. You are actually using a HOTAS setup in the game, okay? And I don't have any problem with HOTAS. I have a HOTAS. I hooked it up. I mapped all my buttons. I flew around until I could get used to it um, and get a good feel for it. And and it's different it's different but that's how i would describe it. it for me it's not necessarily more immersive than the mouse and keyboard it's a different feel and it's a good feel i like it but i also like mouse and keyboard uh, so if you're used to playing on the pc and using a mouse and keyboard uh, i know that i found some setups on well, first of all, let me tell you, if you're going to use HOTAS and you're looking for a setup video on how to set it up for Elite Dangerous, Down to Earth Astronomy. He, he, he has the best one that I've seen out there. And he goes through every setting and tells you how to map it. And he explains what the settings are for. So even if you're not going to use HOTAS, it's not a bad video to go to because he tells you what all these different things are for and what they do. It's it, it's a pretty good video. Um, but if you're going to do mouse and keyboard you can youtube mouse and keyboard setups and if you find one i can 
I don't know if it's called Black Pigeon Gaming. It might have been Black Pigeon Gaming. He did a setup that was based off a of first-person shooter where he, where he uses WSAD for his throttle and his thruster controls. He uses mouse for yaw and pitch. And then I don't know what he uses for um, upwards thrusters and like, like his vertical thrusters, but I use R and F and I control my ship very well with mouse and keyboard. And so it's like, okay, which one am I going to do then? Because I kind of enjoy both and they're, they're both different. And if I was just flying a ship around, I might actually go with the HOTAS. The thing that's working against it, there's a few things, okay? Remember, this is all subjective, this is all my opinion, but I'm just making my case. The thing that's working against it for me is that, uh, number one, I still wind up augmenting my HOTAS with the keyboard and the mouse. Now, you don't have to do that. I believe there's a way, especially if you watch the Down to Earth Astronomy video, that you can map everything you need to the HOTAS, but I just found it a little bit easier and faster if I augmented. I had I had about 90% of everything on my HOTAS, but 10% was with the mouse and keyboard still. So I'm still using mouse and keyboard even with the HOTAS setup. Number two, for me, again, for me, I didn't like using HOTAS for my SRV on planetary ops whenever I'm driving my vehicle around. That's what the SRV is. I forget what a standard reconnaissance vehicle or something like that. Um, I like using the mouse and keyboard for that. So I'm already switching the mouse and keyboard whenever I go planet side. And then number three, the really big one, is uh, Odyssey. We're getting space legs. You're going to be assaulting bases on foot. Who wants to use a, a HOTAS for what what is basically a first-person shooter perspective now? And so I, I just really decided to stick with mouse and keyboard. I think it's uh, I don't think it's immersion breaking because when you're in space, you're not dealing with wind and an atmosphere that cuts across you know the physics of wings with ailerons and flaps and stuff like that. You the, none of that's going on. So I don't find it completely unbelievable that we might have a setup that's more akin to like a track mouse or something you know so for me it just doesn't it does not break immersion for me and it's just a different feel i get more functionality out of it and it's going to translate to the gameplay that odyssey is bringing my i'm anticipating that it will in a much better way than hotas does so it's totally up to you and maybe try them both. I just wanted to throw it out there that it's not necessarily absolutely required for you to spend the money on a HOTAS in order to get some kind of um, a, a, a lock with your game that you wouldn't otherwise have a deeper immersion level. I don't, I, I didn't find that to be true. So there you go. All right. Hawks Gaming. We got two minutes left. Hawks Gaming says, do not go to Moss and Dock. That's where our mission is at. We instead are going to go to Dromi 2. Okay. So we'll exit. And it's behind us. Now there's something here called the Loop of Shame. 13, 12, 11, you see where it's ticking down? 10, 9, 8, right here when you reach 7. If you reach 7, there it is. You want to go to 75% throttle. And in your key bindings, you will find a hot key for 75% throttle. This will keep you from being at too high of a speed when you arrive at your destination to, um, to actually stop and reach it. So from here, now that we're, we're not going to see that play out here because this is a planet. But what we're going to do is we're going to zone, zone in on this high resource extraction site. Now 
I'm gonna get a little bit lower, flatten my curve out. There we go. We're on a good approach, I think. We're gonna do some combat here. And we can disengage. Okay. In the next episode, I will take you through... Uh, yeah, the timer just hit. In the next episode, I will take you through what Hawks advises here. This is uh, well above our level of ranking. So if you look, uh, if you look at your panel, we are right here. And it says that there's bounty hunting, mining, and piracy here, a resource extraction site, popular mining spots. Due to the high yield of resources available, the potential for valuable cargo attracts pirates to these areas, which in turn draws in bounty hunters. To find out more about these professions, check the pilot's handbook links below. And it tells us that it's human threat four. Threat level four is four levels above your combat rank of harmless. It may be too challenging for you. So this is a very dangerous area. Oh, I hit the tab button for boost. Oh, look at that fish eye, man. I don't, I might have to, I didn't like that. Huh. Yeah, see, I have to still play around with this. So in the next episode, I'm going to try 80 and see what that looks like. But I might be actually going back to 60. Now there's where we would go. See, they're fighting out there. But that's going to all be in the next episode, okay? So, again, I'm Aesop Grimm. Thank you for coming by the channel, and I will see you in the next episode where this story continues. Thanks for visiting Aesop Grimm's Chronicles. If you've made it this far in the video, please consider rating, commenting, subscribing, and sharing. I hope to see you in the next episode, and until then, stay shiny.